Are we ready, gentlemen? I d honestly, I don't know. Coming up in this week's show. A supercar is dismantled for no reason. A man with no shirt on. And my whole tongue is wrapped up in intestine. My whole tongue is wrapped up in intestine. Those are the highlights. Those are the best yeah. bits. They really are. <laughs> anyway. Over here in the West, we tend to think that at... £360,000, a Rolls-Royce Phantom is quite expensive. But this week, the Grand Tour is focusing mostly on China. And over there, things are a bit different. As recently as the 1980s, people here would lie awake at night, dreaming of having enough money to buy a mule. Whereas now... Just 30 years later, they dream of being able to buy a honky. Specifically this honky, the L5. In Chinese, honky means the red flag, the symbol of communism. But there's nothing at all communistical about this monster's price tag, which is £880,000. The interior is an exquisite work of art, with rosewood panelling and cream leather. The dashboard and centre console are fully digital. There's jade in the door handles and gold and sunflowers everywhere else. Despite its villainous presence, though, the price is mad. So, I called May and Hammond, and we came up with an idea. If you are a Chinese businessman or businessman woman and you want a car that reflects your status, you don't need to spend £880,000. You can simply pop over to Europe and buy a Mercedes S-Class like this one. And even though this is the 6-litre V12, it costs me just £8,800. In other words, you could have a hundred of these for the price of a honky. At this point, my colleague Richard Hammond arrived in something or other. What is that? This is a Cadillac STS, and you can shut up. I wasn't going to say anything. We were then interrupted by the arrival of Clarkson in a BMW. Ooh, I see you've bought the long car. Yours is long as well. Are you two being from the 1970s? No, they're long wheelbase. 3.4 litre V12. Appearing before your eyes. How can a German car go? Are you it? sure it's a real one? Was it parked in the sea when you bought it? Let's not Damn get it. bogged down with the oxidisation of my car. Because a lot of Chinese people, as we know, come to Europe these days. If Chinese people are going to come to the UK and buy Western soap and Western frogs, why would they not buy Western cars when they're there? Yeah, because you can't, you can't buy these cars second-hand over here. No, they're not. This vintage isn't available here. No, no. And what we're saying is you can buy one of these for a lot less than a luxury honky. A lot, lot less. And that's what we're here to prove, people of China. Eventually, we arrived at the location for our first test. It's one of 78 centres around Chongqing where teenagers can learn to drive away from the traffic. To us, however, it looked like a racetrack, which made it perfect for an ingenious handling test that I just thought of. Now, to do this, we're going to use drones like this one, which have been fitted with flamethrowers. They actually use these in China for clearing um, litter that's got stuck on overhead power cables. Right, so how are we going to use 
airborne flamethrowers like this mm -hmm. to test the power and agility of our cars? Good question. Each of our cars has, as you can see, been fitted with three chains of firecrackers. One on the bonnet, one on the roof, one on the boot lid, OK? So you drive around a special course here while you're attacked by the airborne flamethrowers. And then you score a point when you've finished for every one of the targets that haven't gone off. Go! Try it now. What? Right, we're all set. The first one. No. Oh, look at that for a tidy line. But, whoops. God, that looks tricky. Oh, God, oh. Fire everywhere! Oh, God! Bandit at 10 o'clock. That'll have alarmed him. It will have alarmed him, Sam, yeah. You know dogs don't like fire. No, they hate it. Away! Dab of brakes. Hey! That was such a good laugh. Oh, oh, oh. Waiting around with airborne flamethrowers. Um, really good afternoon. Yes, that was. yes, 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 yes. What? Hang on. Yeah. That was a totally useless test. We had a call the other day from a Chinese car manufacturer called Neo, and they said, we have built a blisteringly fast all-electric supercar, and would one of you like to try it out? Yeah, now, after his escapade going up a Swiss hill in a blisteringly fast all-electric supercar, Richard Hammond said that he really didn't think he was the man for the job. However... It turned out that the car was only available for one day, and unfortunately, on that day, I had the boiler man coming round. Yep. <laughs> and I had a dental appointment. D dentist. Dental yep. appointment, yeah. Yep. So, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Here 
here it is. It's called the EP9. And it's pretty clear that this is no Nissan Leaf. Because a Leaf doesn't have giant head restraints to stop G-forces from snapping your neck during hard cornering. And that's just the start of it. What I have here is a comparison between this Neo EP9 and the Rimac Concept 1, in which I had my little um, tumble down a Swiss mountain side. So, in the Rimac Concept 1, power 1,207 brake horsepower. In this Neo, 1,341 brake horsepower. Power to weight in the Rimac is 652 brake horsepower per tonne. In this Neo, 773 brake horsepower per tonne. Oh, good. So, no pressure then. Right, the high voltage system is active. So here goes. To launch it, it's got to be in drive. Left foot on brake, right foot mash the throttle, right hand hold that back for one, two, three, four, five. Come off the brake. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, come on, come on. Any power, this is good. Oh, my God. Oh, for God's sake. Go, go, go. It's like driving a jet engine something else about which I have bad memories. This is a bad place. However, there is some good news for people like me. The brakes! Whoa! That's put everything back where it should be. My eyes have come forward, my lungs are on the front again. Oh! Now, if you want to experience this phenomenal speed for yourself, you will need two things. First of all, a lot of money, because this costs 1.15 million pounds. Secondly, a racetrack, because it works like that Ferrari FXX, where you buy the car, they deliver it to a track for you, along with a support team. You drive it, crap yourself, then they take it away and hose it out for you. Since it's an electric car, you'll be wondering about range. Obviously, if you hammer it round a track, you are going to wear those batteries out pretty quickly. However, on the plus side, they only take 45 minutes to charge. On the minus side, you have to take the batteries out to do it. And as they weigh 317 kilograms each, you won't be doing that on your own. It is a bit more of a faff than, say, a can of petrol. However, if you're an electric petrol head and you're tempted by the Neo, you might be interested to know that it's not short of pedigree. There's evidence that the people behind this thing really know what they're doing. For starters, the outfit that makes the EP9 also runs a Formula E team, one which won the inaugural championship in 2015. And until recently, the EP9 itself held a lap record around the Nürburgring, with an astonishing time of 6 minutes, 45.9 seconds. Which means it isn't just about going fast in a straight line. 
It has active suspension, active aerodynamics, torque vectoring, and all of that means only one thing. Grip, grippity grip! Begin! This is it! Yeah! Oh no! There's no doubt that as a piece of engineering, the Neo is deeply impressive. And then slingshot! <laughs> but what I love about it most is that thanks to its phenomenal grip, I could hammer it round our track all day and still be the right way up. And from me... There is no higher compliment. Thanks for sticking me with that. <laughs> you know, um, it's interesting. Watching that has convinced me that I will never buy an electric car as long as I live. Why not? Because. Why on earth would I want to employ a team of men and buy a forklift every time I need to go anywhere? Yeah, that's all very well, but a lot of people are more enlightened than you, including me, in fact, Sir Hammond. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, what are the... How does it compare with the Rimac? I was well, interested. Th yes, they are, sure. <laughs> the Neo... It's just... The Neo is just more of everything. It's more power, more grip, more speed. I, don't, I have to say, that looked painfully fast, that it car. Is. I mean... It is really? astonishingly fast, but it is a novelty, an amazing, powerful, fast one, but a novelty nevertheless. And we should make it absolutely clear that you can't drive it on the road at all, can you? No, it's not road no, legal. You can't, unlike the Rimac, which you can, that's what makes it so amazing. And there's a new Rimac coming out soon that'll have more than 1,900 horsepower. But imagine the size of the internal combustion engine you would need to make 1,900 horsepower. It would be... It'd be Massive, that's why the future of supercars like that is electric. It is. What? <laughs> it is. It just isn't. It is. It is. It is. That's the way it's going to go. It's <clears throat> the way it is going. OK, then, let's find out how fast your beloved Neo goes around the Ebola drum. Good start. Need to make up ground. Good line. Out. Not much time left. Come on! Much better! So exciting are those noises! I like the noises! What? You can't love it, those... No, they're ho it's a whole new set of noises, you pillock! OK. It's the future. OK, let's see how fast you're elegantly entitled N10, no, Neo, Neo. EP9. Yes. Got round, shall we? Here we go. <clears throat> Top ten. Come on. There you go. Oh, yeah. Look at them oh, in yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. That... That is faster 
faster than the Aston Martin Vulcan. You're absolutely right, Hammond. It is a very impressive car, and it is faster than a Vulcan. But it's slower than the petrol-powered McLaren Senna, which is road legal. So that is petrol one, yes. electricity zero. All right, don't do that face. Don't do that face. No. Smug face. Not the smug face. I don't... James, just move it on quick. Yes, uh, in this show, we are explaining to the people of China that they don't need to waste huge sums of money on new luxury cars when they could buy something used from Europe for a lot less. We got back on the road in our fire-damaged cars, with James still moaning about his temperature issues. The air conditioning is now so broken that it's permanently hot, even when I turn it to low and press every auto button. I decided there was only one thing I could do about this. Ignore him. Jesus. Look at that. They're actually building another motorway with viaducts and tunnels on the other side of the valley. Not one motorway. Why do you need another one over there? Still, all these motorways did mean we could prove that our cars work well as long-distance cruisers. Go. That was stupid. I have been clever. <laughs> Go on, keep your foot in it, man. Lordy Lord! Excellent. However, in the USS Norman Schwarzkopf... Oh, God. It's dying. What's happened? Loads of warnings came on, and then Ooh. it lost power. I made it to this off-ramp, and now it's... it died. Oh, dear. Not sure my jump leads are going to get that going, are they? Oh, no. look. Oh, That's dear. That's really gone bang, isn't it? There's oil coming out everywhere. Do you know the number for the emergency services? No, I don't. Do you know how to say, my Cadillac's broken down? Do you know what junction you're at? No. Oh, dear. No, neither do I. Do you? No, I do, no. Come on, we've got a long way to go. Eventually, we... Well, two of us arrived at the location we'd selected. It's known as the 24 Curve Road because it has... 24 fun-filled curves. It was built in 1935 to ferry US military equipment to China. And it hasn't really been maintained since. So the surface is loose and potholed, and it looked like it should be a right laugh. This was actually part of the Road that the only road that linked the then capital of China with India and Burma. Yeah, well, before that, all the supplies that came into China had to be flown over the Himalayas, which was incredibly dangerous in the 30s. I think the Americans lost something like sorry 400... To, sorry to interrupt. Have you seen this stupid thing? Well, never mind that. Look what he's driving. Why, well, is that Hammond? I guess the Cadillac's definitely broken then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <coughs> Check out my Fulu. Why have you got that? Well, I wasn't going to let you have all the fun, was I? No, but, um, never mind that. Why have you got it? Well, my telephone translation device at the toll booth worked to a degree, to this extent. What? It, somebody got you a car? Look, I've got wheels, three of them. <laughs> anyway, listen. Here's what we're doing. Yeah. 
It's a test of speed, because we are against the clock. Bear that in mind, OK? OK. And durability at the same time. So you've got to get up this road, which goes all the way up there, OK, as fast as possible, and keep your car in one piece in the process. Richard and I decided that James should volunteer to go first. Oh. Oh, you look exactly like a racing driver, apart from visually. It's a racing clown. Can we just get on with it? It's very hot in here. Are you going with your window down or up? A lot no. of stones. Down. It's a small risk from being hit by a stone. It's a large risk of dying from suffocation. Right. Anything else we want to say to him? Yes, Let's go. take some time and prepare mentally mm. and really think about this. Have you visualised the course? Oh. No. OK. He looks quite cross. It does, yeah. Three, two, one, go. There you go. Away. Comes a really dangerous end. This is just brilliant. Next, it was my turn. Right, I'm attaching the wobbly-headed symbol of capitalism here to bring me good fortune on this perilous test. If you're ready. Yes. Five, four, three, two, one, go! No. Oh, for God's sake. Oops.
It is quite scary through here. That will do. did it, didn't you? Yeah. So, I've won that. Well, we don't know. We haven't got your time yet. You said your words, test of durability and is against the clock. Your car is broken. It's not broken. A tire's come off. Broken. Down at the start line, I was waiting for the signal to go. Mm. Little cubby hole. Richard Hammond. Hello, yes. Three, two, one, go. Oh, come on, I'm not right. Uh, OK, here I go. Go! to play. Or did he just disappear behind the... He has. Look, he's gone off there. Uh, so there we are. I'm afraid that Richard Hammond's luck has finally run out. And it's with deep regret and great sadness that James and I must now announce the untimely demise of... All right! Not again. How does he do it? I don't know. Well, on that terrible disappointment, back to the tent. I'm OK. I'm OK. Smug Don't worry. Smug. Smug, because I won that. No, you didn't. I did. I was the fastest. And it was supposed to be a test of fun, and you moaned the entire way up the hill. Hello. What? what? Hello. I did have quite a big crash at the end there. <laughs> I just well, thought we could... There's nothing particularly remarkable about that, is there? No. I mean, why would we... <laughs> the fact is, the reason you crashed... Well, obviously, your incompetence, but also because your Cadillac broke down and your Mercedes was too humid. So that means the winner is definitely, of the whole thing, the BMW 750i. What? Actually, no. To be fair, the real winner of the whole thing was our brilliant idea to sell second-hand limos to the Chinese. No, he's absolutely right about that, because it makes them happy and it helps us with our balance of payments. Yeah. Everybody wins. Mm. It was a good idea, yes. except for one tiny detail. You see, this programme is shown in every single country in the world, except one. <laughs> Which one? China. Ah. <laughs> so this entire show has been a total waste of time. 
it's an hour of your life you'll never get back. <laughs> and on that terrible disappointment, it's time to end. Next week, I'm happy to say, we're back in the groove. We're in Scotland, and I get an Alfa Romeo GTV6. Make me very happy. See you then. Take care. Good night. Good night. <laughs>